Hello again, friends. I'm excited to be talking about the Seder with you some more. When we get into Magid, this telling of the story of the Seder, this Haggadah talks about the different kinds of children. So before I tell you about the kinds of children the Haggadah talks about, I'm going to ask you, what kind of child would you say that you are? Is there something that people tell you you are? Like, oh, you're so creative. Or, oh, you're so funny. Now the Haggadah talks about four different kinds of children, and I bet that they are not kinds of children that people call you. But maybe they are. The Haggadah talks about a wise child, so smart, a wicked child, so mean, a simple child, and a child who does not know how to ask. Now, if your response is, wait a minute, one person is never wise all the time, or wicked all the time, or simple all the time, or not knowing how to ask all the time, I would say you are exactly right. And we'll get a little bit into that soon. But the reason the Haggadah talks about four children is first of all, because we do a lot of fours with the Haggadah. Four cups of wine, four questions, so sure, four children also. But also it's because there are four times in Torah that Torah talks about telling your child about the exodus from Egypt, about the Passover story. And so our ancient rabbis said they must be talking about telling four different kinds of children. And that the way we speak to each child needs to speak to the things that they are thinking, the questions they are asking, and the kind of child they are. So as you will see in our text sheet, the first kind of child that the Haggadah mentions is the wise child. And the wise child says, what are the testimonies and statutes and laws? that Hashem, our God, commanded you. Testimonies, statutes, and laws are all big words meaning rules and details. And you're supposed to answer, if you're a grown-up, the wise child by teaching the wise child the rules. Now, I don't know what you think of the wise child at a first glance. Maybe the wise child sounds like kind of a know-it-all or kind of even a suck-up. But the thing about the wise child is that the wise child is super interested in all the details. And maybe you are not interested in as many details about the Passover Seder as this wise child is. But I bet that at some point in your life, you have been super interested about something and wanted to know all of the details about it. My brother, when he was a kid, became super interested in the sinking of the Titanic. And he read all the books that had ever been published about the Titanic, and he knew all the details that had ever been publicized about the passengers on the Titanic. And he even got so interested that he started studying things about other ships. So my brother was a wise child about the Titanic. Maybe not so much about the Passover Seder, but about the Titanic. Can you think of something that you are a wise child about? Yeah, I'm sure you are a wise child about something. So let's talk about the wicked child, or sometimes the Haggadah calls it the rebellious child. The child who's kind of pushing back and saying, I don't want to be part of this thing. In the Haggadah, it says, what does this rebellious child say? The rebellious child says, what is this service to you? Now notice, that's very similar to what the wise child says, but I imagine 
that the rebellious child is speaking in a different tone, like, what all is this stuff to you anyway? And the Haggadah says, by saying to you, the child implies, but not to me. I'm not part of this. I think this is dumb. I'd rather not be here. And this is all ridiculous. Now the Haggadah says to the wicked child, the parents should bluntly wipe the smile off their face and say, it's because of this. What happened for me when I went out of Egypt? And the parent says, for me, but not you. Because if you don't want to be part of this, that would mean that you wouldn't be part of the good parts too, the getting to leave Egypt. Now, it's kind of icky to think of being so harsh with someone who's saying, I don't want to be part of this. But if you look down at the document about Merle Feld's four children, I think noticing how if we relate the wise, wicked, simple, and don't know how to ask childs to ourselves today, we can see how sometimes someone who says, I don't want to be connected to any of this. This doesn't matter to me. I'm not part of other people, really winds up missing out on important connections and positive things. Now, of course, we all sometimes feel like that wicked child. Have you ever felt like there was something that just seemed dumb and you didn't want to be part of it? To be honest, I have two. And I try to feel really positive and have a good attitude about things. But the wicked child is part of the Seder and part of the family experience as well. So we move on to the ch simple child who just doesn't know what anything is and says simply, what is this? And you should answer, the Haggadah says to the parents, this is a story about the miracles that happened when we left slavery in Egypt. We should tell a big story. Remember how the wise child liked all the details, but sometimes we just like a really good story. Has there ever been a time when you just wanted to hear a big story, when you were just curious about what happened, but didn't need to hear all of the details and how to do it exactly right. Yeah, I feel that way too sometimes. The last child is the child who does not know how to ask. And for that child, the Haggadah says that the parents should start to tell the story and maybe then the child will come up with questions. Now there are so many things that I don't know how to ask about, right? I might be a wise child when it comes to the Passover Seder because I do know a lot of the rules and I know a lot of the story. But if you were to start to talk to me about Minecraft, I would not know even what to ask. I would need you to tell me a whole lot about it before I would even come up with questions. So those are the four children. And the interesting thing is they all belong at the Seder table. Even the one who's feeling wicked, even the one who doesn't know how to ask. But what I wanna ask you tonight is to look at the different interpretations of the children. Because like we said earlier, it's not really like there's one wise child and one wicked child and one simple child and one child who doesn't know how to ask. We have all of those children inside us sometimes. Sometimes we feel super interested and curious and like we want to know all the details. And sometimes we feel like, you know what? This doesn't connect to me at all. I think this is dumb. And sometimes we feel like, wow, just tell me the story. And sometimes we're like, I don't know anything about this. I don't even know where to start. But also some of our commentators say that this has to do with whole generations. Some of our commentators say that we feel these things all at the same time right now. So if you are studying this for jewel credit, I invite you to either send back in writing or send a video 
talking about which child you relate to or which children you relate to about which parts of Passover. So I hope you have great conversations about the four children and a happy Passover.